Supporting People Program, and it was a response to young people, um, young homeless people needing temporary accommodation in the area and a full support service to enable them to live independently. Um, we've been looking for a more central location in Oma to have this drop in centre. Um, we wanted it to be accessible and open to, to everybody who, who needed it. So we were looking at a range of different sites in the area um, and in May 2019 it was our director Tony McQuillan and our vice chair Michael Fenton were introduced by Eamon Sharkey who's a member of the local credit union who's unfortunately not here today um, to Mike Reynolds who's the owner of this property. I believe Mike and Colette Reynolds are here today and that's... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, they, they previously ran these premises as a music shop selling and repairing instruments for many years. Um, you can see out the back, there's the old sign in, out the back there, so that's lovely. Um, and I believe that Mike still carries on his instrument repairs from home, and it's lovely to have you Thanks for the plug. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone has any repairs. <laughs> so once we agreed the lease with Mike, we then needed to make the premises suitable for our aims. Um, we were able to fantastically take advantage of the new provider investment fund, which is sponsored by supporting people as well. Um, so with their assistance, we managed to obtain more than £46,000 um, from this fund to renovate and modernise the property. And I, we just want to give our gratitude to John McWellen and the housing executive team for their fantastic efforts in getting us to We also had invaluable architectural support from Joe McCormick, who gave his time freely to design and manage the works. Joe is here as well. Yeah. Thank um, and on behalf of the management committee, I'm also really grateful to and proud of the staff team for all the work they've provided such an important service to often very vulnerable young people, working with them to help them get the best out of themselves, especially during the pandemic. You've responded so well and you've done exceptional work in the most challenging environment. So thank you to the staff. And the team has been fantastically led by Stella, who also managed the budget and had a strong hand, I believe, in choosing the decor. So if you don't like it... <laughs> um, but I hope you agree with me that this is a fantastic renovation and the transformation of the premises is just incredible. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Orla, who's no stranger to Shelter and I. She previously participated in our sleep out in Oma and again in Stravan, so she's very dedicated to sleeping out in the cold for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Orla, will you do us the honour of formally opening class for three? Yep, no problem. Um, first of all, good afternoon everyone. And I have the easy job today of having the scissors when everyone's doing the work. <laughs> um, but it's a huge honour and a privilege for me to be here and to open these uh, premises officially today. Um, I suppose my work and my involvement with Shelter and I goes back to the sleep outs and to the fundraising campaigns and that was a really eye-opening opportunity for me as to what a homeless person would experience if they have to sleep out on the street. Um, and I suppose from there on I had done the sleep out in Oma and then the sleep out also in Strabad. It really opened my eyes and a lot of people locally as well in terms of raising awareness of homelessness and the fact that it is in our doorstep and a lot of people don't see it. Um, time and time again but I've no doubt that these premises will do huge work um, in terms of providing support particularly for young people as you've said it's so crucial at this time we've seen the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and it's young people unfortunately um, that have suffered the most as a result of that but I know the work that um, Shelter and I do 
in terms of helping people, in terms of providing support, um, particularly to people who are experiencing hardship or distress as a result of homelessness or as a result of um, experiencing adverse housing conditions. So this premise here is quite ideal. You're actually neighbours to ourselves now, so <laughs> I'll be down for the odd coffee or a cup of tea. Um, and we'll definitely be raising awareness that you are here and that your door is open for anybody that is in need. And certainly my experience from anyone um, working with Shelter NA has been the compassion and the empathy um, that you show towards people that are in need or in need of a pick-me-up, maybe feeling um, at their lowest at that time. But the support and guidance that you provide can be really life-changing, to be quite honest. Um, so, without further ado, we'll yeah. cut the ribbon and get things done. Well. Up, but I'll leave it on first because you've got to understand it's important to buy social and at Liverpool are the greatest thing. <laughs> it's a particular delight to have been invited here to the launch. Shelter are a marvellous organisation and understanding the importance of supporting young people because a good start in life is critical to a good life and if it's been difficult for you any support you can get to, to provide that start it's helpful as, you, as people, young, young people move forward into adulthood. It gives them a range of skills, but the support is alongside them. This drop-in centre is just a perfect way to see that support being provided. And Shelter and the Deed Slate receive real funding from the Supporting People programme. And they do a marvellous job for the resources that, 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 that they receive. But one thing that I think is really interesting, excites me, and I have a responsibility for it in the housing executive, is the innovation fund, because that's where we test new things. We try things that ha might work, we try things that we think will work, and we get better services as a result of it. Now, I remember seeing this application coming through, I'm part of a panel. The applications are blind. You don't know who it is that's applying. You know what they're applying for and where they're applying from. So I saw this coming through. And it's really interesting and exciting and it wasn't a huge amount of resource it was 46,000 pounds but it's been turned into something special and so it's a delight to have been there seeing the concept that you guys put all the hard work into writing up and, 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 and submitting and are seeing it as something really good as an outcome normally the chair comes to do this he couldn't make this so I got the opportunity I just jumped out <laughs> not that I wanted to see Oma I like coming to him, but, but the idea of, the, of that full circle and knowing that what we're doing here is accommodation is critically important to you know, safe accommodation but it's that ongoing and regular support that helps them find the life paths that they need to in their future so I, I commend Shelter on it I think Slate is a great is a great initiative and I'm delighted to be here thank you very much <laughs> Well, I'm just going to say a quick few words really in relation to um, last year and it was a very very difficult year with COVID but you know it didn't slow things down for us we still received around about 30 referrals from various referral sources we actually housed um, 19 young people and provided support for them and in the same 12 month period we managed to help seven of those young people actually move on out into the community. Um, some of them we had done such a good job with, they didn't require the step down, which is where they can continue to take the, the support into their new accommodation. Four of them have continued with that. So, you know, that's the really important thing here that we're continuing to work with these young people, you know, once they move out into the community to help them then maintain you know their own tenancies and hopefully stay there until they're ready to move on that they're not going to be forced out and things like that so we have a very very unique project here i think where we can you know work with young people before we can actually house them in their own homes if need be and then also once they have actually stayed with us in our accommodation and are ready to move on they can still you know avail of the support 
So yeah, we're very, very happy um, with all the work that's done. Staff are amazing. Um, we have lots more to do. You know, we need to now look at how we can work better with our private landlords in the local area because that's where we really find it difficult to actually find suitable, affordable accommodation for our young people. And so there's a lot more work to be done there. So that, that's the next steps for us. And ultimately, hopefully, Shelter NI will provide our own accommodation as well and start to design and build some new stuff for this area. So. Hi, I'm Eamon from Housing Rights, just here from the Rent and Rights Project. We're here in Slate today to take part in this wonderful event, to take part in this new, this new premises, and we're really happy to be here, and of course, I'm supporting everything the Slate is doing. I'm basically just having a wee chance to explain what Rent and Rights is about as well, to everyone that's come out today. Uh, essentially, what Rent and Rights is, is an advocacy service as well as mediation for young people, so under 25, and we're just making sure that everyone's aware of how they can get in touch with us. So just here from the information below, you can just see our wee number here, CO 2890 two four five six four oh and of course our wee email there as well as a whatsapp and we encourage any young people in the area or across regional northern Ireland who are facing housing issues to get in touch with us as soon as they can uh, we'll basically provide legal advice and also mediation service to young people whether they're in a private tenancy or otherwise and uh, of course we'd love to hear from you so all the best and thank you again for having us today hi there i'm alex i'm a young person for slate um just want to say it's great that i was invited here to represent the young people uh, to the open day of the official new office uh, Slate's a great place, they've helped me through everything. Um, I used to live in one of their flats and now I've moved on to my own tenancy, but they also follow on and support me through that as well. Um, the new office is a perfect location uh, for young people. Like whenever they were in their old office, it was quite far out. So if they're in the centre town, it's a drop in, even if young people want to get help and they're not part of their service, they can drop in and avail of the help. Um, so I just want to say a massive thank you to Slate and a massive thank you to Shelter for having Slate work with young people around the rural areas of Northern Ireland. Thank you. Okay, my name's uh, Councillor Earl Thompson. I'm the Chair of Fermanagh and Roma District Council and Councillor for Roma Town. It's a great honour and a privilege for me to be invited here today to the opening of this great premises for Slate. I think this is something that was greatly needed, Noma, and I'd like to pay tribute to Mike Reynolds and his wife for for the premises that they have here and they've recently retired from this so it's good to see it being put to full use again for our young people of this area. As, as I say as Chair of Council and First Citizen of the Fermanagh Loma District I offer my full and warmest congratulations to you all. Thank you.